Alrighty, so I don't normally do much voiceover stuff for videos, but um, this one I kind of just recorded myself playing Labyrinth and everything in my free time. Um, and I have to say, this Labyrinth was a lot easier than the ones before, uh, or the, the one that we've had so far. But I still really enjoy the Labyrinth game mode in of itself. I just really like the whole, like, you know, start off with a level one character, build up a, a team at random, and sort of try to synergize as much as you can, and see the progression of the characters leveling up and everything thing and uh, I don't know it's just really really cool in my opinion and so this one is obviously collab themed so the collab characters are a really big part of this uh, but before we hop in I do want to say we're almost at 11k subs so if you are new to the channel or anything like that feel free to subscribe it is free but uh, yeah either way so starting off of course we do want to start off with Kizuna she is basically a, a shoe in for the team uh, if I'm being completely honest because she is absolutely fantastic for this game mode uh, the fact that this one is collab sort of, you know, centered, and the whole theme of this one is being around the Shield Hero collab because it's, you know, an event for the collab itself. Um, she does really, really well because if I'm not mistaken, all three of the bosses on this, you know, sort of uh, labyrinth are going to be either weak or like they deal less damage to collab heroes and they take more damage from collab heroes or something along those lines. I didn't actually check the exact, um, you know, specifics on those passives but they do have passives uh that center around the shield hero uh, collab characters so she is just really good in general she has a pierce card aoe which will rank up her other cards and everything in hand which is very very nice uh, i don't know why i said it like that uh <laughs> but uh i don't know she just she was a really solid starting unit um, so I would definitely recommend you grab her every single time that you try this if you have to try it more than one time after that, for me specifically, I ended up going for Red Slater, and it was basically just because he has a really good lockdown skill. He, of course, does not stop them from attacking, but if they try to use a stance, uh, like I end up going against Griamore at some point, um, and just being able to shut down his stance and everything was really, really helpful. Um, if they try to use debuff cards, you can shut that down. It also lowers a little bit of their attack-related stats, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then later on, I was actually able to get Red Merlin, and started to sort of build up my passives and everything to sort of revolve around uh, using a mono red team. Uh, so I definitely recommend it. I think, you know, just honestly, I think the biggest tip that you can give for this specifically is just try to get as much synergy as you possibly can around your team. Uh, because I went for mono red, I ended up getting a passive that, you know, helped out basic stats or something along those lines for, you know, all red attribute units. I ended up being able to roll Twiggo, uh, so I put him in the back to help with a little bit more tankiness because he helps out red units, of course. Um, I don't know, I just, I really leaned hard into the, you know, the red or the mono red synergy. And I think it helped out a whole lot. Uh, there were a ton of times where you go through and you get passives where it's like, oh, hey, uh, we're going to bo uh, boost, you know, crit chance or crit damage or pierce rate or whatever the, uh, you know, whatever the, the stat it is for shield collab heroes. So I could definitely see if you... I, I did see Philo in the, the pool of characters that I could choose from two different times, but I never rolled Nalfami or Raftalia, and I think that they're both really good characters for this specifically, like if you can roll like a, if you can get a full shield hero collab team and keep rolling those passives where it boosts, you know, shield hero, you know, stats and stuff like that, I, I think that that would be a really good way to go, so I would definitely recommend that if you get the chance. The first boss ended up being Gerard, which I thought was kind of interesting, and the only real notable thing that you have to worry about with her is that at once you reach, uh, or once you get her below, I think it's 50% HP, she does have like a, a cleanse, like she'll cleanse all debuffs, completely full heal herself, which is really more annoying than anything, and I, I think I was just shy of 30,000 CC. Uh, which I don't know for sure if that's the actual like limit. Like I don't know if that's what she's at, but I was below, like right under 30,000, and I had to go second during that fight, which was kind of unfortunate. So I don't know if 30,000 was specifically what I needed to beat over to go first, but obviously during the boss battles and everything, because they're going to be hitting a lot harder, going first is obviously ideal. So like I said, that, her, you know, sort of like, I guess, full heal mechanic is basically the only thing that you really have to worry about. But depending on how much synergy you have, which can be kind of tough because, you know, just going through the first, you know, floor, I guess, uh, you're not going to have too much going on at the time. Um, <laughs> sorry, dog noises. Uh, but... 
I do uh, I do think that she wasn't too bad. Wasn't I don't know any sort of like big challenge. Um, the first time that I fought her, I, I she actually did a pretty decent amount of damage. But Kizuna's ultimate actually does a really good amount to her, so I would definitely recommend trying to either not maybe not necessarily rushing an ult, but focusing on Kizuna cards could probably help you out a lot. So floor two for me wasn't normally uh, or wasn't actually too bad, I guess, because I was basically able to use Red Slater to stop anybody who was going to be debuff carding or anything like that. And on top of that, I ended up getting Red Merlin uh, as my third unit for the time being. And I thought that that was actually a pretty good option out of the ones that I had. Um, I could have went for Red Melascula, and I thought that that could have been a really cool mechanic, especially uh, if I if I would have gambled on it. I did end up rolling. Uh, I think it's overwhelming odds or something like that or something or overcoming crisis I think maybe is the name of the passive but I ended up rolling that uh, that one later on where it's like if you survive with 10% HP uh, or less you gain like a lot of basic stats or something like that I can't remember exactly what the the wording on that one is but it's a really good passive that you can roll um, and it pairs really nicely with any of the revive passives that you can get but um, I didn't really want to gamble it so I went for Merlin and it ended up being super beneficial because I could use like I said I used Slater to stop any debuffs or stances or heals or anything like that and then I just if a character was going to attack twice um, I would just use Merlin to freeze that character so that way I didn't have to take as much damage during their turn um, and I basically just used that to coast all the way through to the boss on floor two so uh, that made things a lot easier I think just having some sort of lockdown or attack seals are obviously very very good but you know once you get to floor two and three the bosses are basically immune to debuffs so you don't want to rely too much on like a debuff lockdown kind of team because it'll fall off Last up for Floor 2, we had Gloxenia, which is just the, the overall boss for Floor 2. And I have to say, I, I, I will admit, I did not read over all of the passives or anything that he has, but... Um he really didn't seem overly difficult. He ended up dealing a pretty good amount of damage to Merlin uh, for some reason instead of attacking Slater like every other character that I faced in the in the Labyrinth. For some reason, he really focused on Merlin for whatever reason. And um, I have to say, he ended up getting her pretty low, but the there wasn't any sort of like specific mechanics besides just being completely debuff immune. Uh, that really hindered me here. Like, obviously, I couldn't freeze him or use, you know, Slater's card to really, like, lock down at all, uh, which was, you know, maybe a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, I really took that to heart and started to sort of try to change up the comp a little bit uh, going into Floor 3, but I really didn't change up too much, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but overall, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Gloxenia, I would need to look at all of his actual, like, passives that he has it looks like one of his might have been some sort of like revive or something but uh i didn't end up activating it i think i just had a, a decent amount of cards or like good cards in hand by the time i sort of like you know whittled him down uh so i don't really have much advice for that one to be specific but uh, with the team that i was using even with it being very like debuff heavy i guess or like you know focused it still ended up working out pretty well so moving into floor three, uh, the first thing that I ended up doing was getting rid of Merlin and that might have been not the greatest decision because there was a lot of just fights in general just making your way through floor three uh, that I think could have been made a lot easier if I would have kept the freeze lockdown but I wanted to sort of transition away from trying to do lockdown and everything so that way I could not have to you know rely on that whenever it came to the last boss because like the taking you know experience from the very first labyrinth that we got once you got to the very end um melee who was the the boss on that one had like a revive and he did like a ton of damage and you had to be like basically max level max super awaken uh to over cc him and it was just a really hard time so i got rid of merlin i ended up swapping for scotty um which i think she, scotty's a really underrated unit in the game in my personal opinion like she has a lot of like really good uses um and, you know, obviously, once she puts on a whole bunch of debuffs on herself, uh, it sort of, like, helps reduce the damage that you take and, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, it helps out a lot. So the only weird thing was that I couldn't... I had to force myself to not go for Kizuna's level 3 buff card at that point because it would give me debuff immunity. And then it would kind of just, you know, hinder Scotty's, you know, 
buffing or debuffing herself sort of gimmick. So that was a little counterintuitive, got to be honest, not the greatest decision I've ever made, but um, I don't know. It, she was she was dealing okay damage and just sort of helping sort of like, you know, help buff the team, I guess, in general with just staying alive and everything. So I really can't complain too much, but uh, I, I don't know. I, maybe I just swapped off of uh, Merlin a little too early. And last but not least, we have the final boss, which ended up being Monspeed, which I think is really cool. I think the commandments sort of have kind of transitioned away from the spotlight nowadays, which is kind of unfortunate because a lot of the commandments are really cool characters, so it's cool to see Monspeed as the final boss. But um, uh, honestly, the biggest thing that you need to do working through um, you know, not only floor three, but you know, just the floors in general is making sure that you're getting levels, getting super awakening and stuff like that as much as possible. Uh, because you know, getting that extra CC and just damage and stuff like that in general, just like the stats that you obtain from, you know, leveling up and super awakening and everything like that. It's, it's, very very good it helps out so 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 much i ended up going into monspeed's battle with 124,000 cc not you know not exactly sure how much i needed i don't know if it was 120,000 100,000 whatever the case may be but um i definitely out cc'd him so i definitely got to go first which was really really good on my part that's obviously a very integral part to you know beating bosses sometimes is that if they go first and they absolutely wreck you you know instantly it's gonna it's gonna hinder you quite a bit and for the actual fight itself, Monspeed really wasn't too bad either. He dealt a pretty good amount of damage to Scotty, and I think almost got her uh, like down and like out, but uh, really not overall too bad. Um, I think Kizuna really carried because I ended up getting a passive that helped out uh, just her crit damage in general, and then I got an overall crit damage uh, that wasn't specific to shield hero characters. Um, so she was just doing a really good amount of damage, and I ended up pulling a good amount of cards during the Monspeed fight for her, so that helped out a lot. But um, I don't know, he doesn't have anything super, super crazy. The uh, the only thing that I really checked was uh, his, like, he has an HP buff where it is the hero recovers 30% of diminished HP when surviving an ultimate move. So you don't want to go, like, too willy nilly, I guess. Like, you don't want to just ult rush or anything if you're not, you know, confident that you're going to kill. Um, surprisingly, in the first Labyrinth, I didn't go too much for ultimate levels, uh, but I just so happened to roll a pretty decent amount of ultimate levels during this one, and I got to 5 6. I think for all of my characters so the alts were hitting pretty hard so I don't know if you obviously if you level them up enough they can be a really really good tool but you know just don't don't ult like at the very beginning because I know that there's that one passive where it's like oh if you meet these requirements you gain three ultimate move gauge at the very beginning so it makes it super easy to ult rush um, that is a very good passive I'm not telling you not to get that one but you just need to be careful with when you ult against Monspeed because he'll heal a lot of HP back um, so I don't know he doesn't have a revive or anything like overly annoying or crazy I was kind of surprised because the, it was only my second attempt at the Labyrinth that I ended up finishing it. Um, and I know that a couple of people have already said that it was a lot easier than they were, uh, or the, a lot easier than the original Labyrinth. So I'm interested to see sort of what changes they end up making to it in the future and what we end up getting in the next Labyrinth. But uh, I just, I love the game mode. I really think it's super cool. The only thing I hate is that you have to pay 30 stamina to get back into it because, you know, sometimes the... Uh, the RNG can really ruin your run with bad characters or bad passives or whatever the case may be. Maybe you end up getting one where it's like, oh, you need to be, or you need to have all different race characters or all humans or all fairies or, you know, each character has to be red or blue or whatever. And then you just get really bad lineups with the characters that you roll. So um, there's, there's RNG that goes into it for sure. But honestly, like, I think if you, if you focus on Kizuna and sort of build a good supporting team around her, I honestly think that you'll be able to beat this. Uh, pretty much no problem because it's definitely a lot easier than the first one that we had but either way that's pretty much it from me thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe if you have not already and i will see you in the next one